Hi everyone, it's Documentary, and today I have a different sort of tutorial for you. Last year, Opal Essence, a drag queen from New York, reached out to me wanting a commission made of one of her idols, the lovely Aja. Aja appeared on Season 9 of RuPaul's Drag Race and Season 3 of All Stars. I am personally a huge fan of RuPaul's Drag Race and couldn't say no to Opal. She was so wonderful to work with and has her own YouTube channel. She also styles and sells amazing wigs, so be sure to check her out. For this video, as Aja would be my first ever commission, I wanted to share that experience with you. If you want to sell your own repaints, hopefully this video will help you on your way with some helpful tips. We will be covering things like working with clients, creating your work to suit the project, shipping, pricing, and lots more. To start off, let's talk about finding commissions. It's all about getting your work out there. Opal saw my work on Instagram and that's how I got my first commission. So make sure you let people know if you are selling dolls and showcase your work anywhere you can. When potential clients do contact you, always be friendly and professional when communicating. Doll repainting is an intimate art and it's easy to form wonderful friendships through that. But first, you need to secure the commission. What do they want? Does it suit your style? Do you have the time available? How much will it cost you in materials? And how much will you charge for your labor? Use this information to negotiate a cost for the client's commission and practice feeling confident with your fair quote. You can always reach out to family and friends for your first commission or even try lowering your initial price to be competitive and help ease any nerves about that first job. By now, you should have a clear design brief and an agreed price and it's all systems go. Before continuing here, make sure you have some form of work agreement, which includes the details of the work from the client, materials, labor, and your final quote. Opal requested Aja dressed to the nines on the red carpet in this stunning outfit. I sent pictures of the dolls I already owned and Opal decided to go with this secondhand cutie. Always be flexible with your clients. Sometimes using a brand new doll can be beneficial while other times not necessary. For example, I bought a new doll for my Justin Bieber repaint as I knew he would be played with a lot. As Aja would be a display piece, we went with second hand. For Aja, I could jump straight into making her dress. I used multiple fabrics trying to recreate that gorgeous outfit of hers. After tweaking an old dress pattern I had, I layered fabrics and glued them together at the edges. I pleated and sewed the bottom of the dress before I was able to sew all the pieces together. Fitting the dress onto her, I could then move on to the sleeves. They started as a basic sleeve pattern with glued edges. I used even more fabrics and ribbons and cut them into strips. After folding, pleating, and sewing each ruffled layer, I could hand stitch them across that original sleeve. a jeweled strap to her dress while the sleeves became a backless jacket of sorts. Necklace and rings added some much needed glam before we could focus on spicing up those shoes. 
The shoes I picked out were already so cute as they were, but I decided that dry brushing a bit of silver acrylic and adding a few diamantes would only elevate them. Then it was onto her face. I stared at so many photos of Aja, and I was confronted again with just how difficult it is to recreate another person's face. The most important thing I realized I could do was just do my best. I created her hair using a bright yellow yarn that I combed into wefts and glued into place on her head. This was the perfect time, I thought, to gloss her eyes, glue more diamantes, and add eyelashes. Heated metal tools were used to style her hair, and with the final touch of some giant diamond earrings, she was ready to come together, all ready for our next stage, packaging and shipping. But first, here she is, Aja. Once you ship your doll, they are gone, so make sure you take all the photos you think you'll ever need. You can use these pictures in your portfolio and on your social medias, which in turn can bring you your next commission. Your packaging is another step that's often overlooked. Try to put as much of your own personality into your packaging, as for your client, this moment will be the pinnacle of their experience with you. Think of your packaging size as well as adequate protection for your doll while in transit. I also like to give extra treats from Australia as an extra special hello or good day. Lastly, always know where you're shipping to and how much it will cost you in advance. Include your shipping costs in your quote and twiddle your thumbs until you get that amazing message saying the doll has arrived. I was over the moon that Opal loved her doll and I 
loved hearing about how she came along for the trip to DragCon. Opal not only met and showed Aja the doll, but ever so sweetly gave the doll to her as a gift once Aja exclaimed how much she liked it. Ooh, that gave me good feels all over and is one of the perks of creating and selling your own art. I hope this video has helped guide you through selling commissions and inspires you to take that next step with your own art. For anyone doubting themselves, don't. You've got this and you're gonna do great. The world needs your art, so let loose and have fun. As for me, I'll see you guys real soon with a brand new repaint. Bye! Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel to show your support. Follow us on Instagram and come on over to Patreon where you can tip us for $2 a month and check out exclusive repaint videos. See you next time.